Hi, it's Kraz, the new beekeeper guy. Well, we did a presentation for NASA's Environmental Science Department, that would be the South Brevard Beekeepers and Stuart Rowan, who's the president of the South Brevard Beekeepers. And they had some questions, some follow-up questions uh, that they sent us, and I would like to answer some of those questions. Some of them have already been answered by Bruce from Bruce and His Bees. You can check out his YouTube channel. And uh, I'm gonna answer the questions about honey. So we will talk to you soon on this episode of The New Beekeeper Guy. I'm the new beekeeper guy First question is, what do bees use honey for? And is it a food? What exactly is honey? That sweet, delicious substance we call honey is derived from flowering plants' nectar. That nectar is produced by the flowers to attract pollinators and other mutually beneficial animals to the flowers and the bees will collect that nectar from these flowers and bring it back to their hives. They'll pass it off to other bees where that nectar will mix in the bee gut and add enzymes and other substances and that those bees will put regurgitated if you will back into these cells. You can see where the wet nectar has been placed in the cells next to the pollen. Pollen is protein for bees, and nectar is the carbohydrates for bees. And bees do use it as food. They feed their young. You can see the larvae, which are the white worm-looking things. And the bees will feed that nectar and pollen mixed together as bee bread to those larvae, which will turn into worker bees or um, drone bees. And that can be pulled from the hives, uh, once it is capped, we'll talk about capping later, but if it's capped, it can be saved, and if it is needed right away to feed bees, they do that. How much honey is produced each month? The quantity of honey produced each month depends on how big and thriving the hive is. Um, the interesting fact is a bee, a single bee, will only produce one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey her entire life. So um, the, how big the hive is, how many bees are there, and, and also what is flowering, what kind of nectar flow is going on at the time, um, will all determine how much nectar is brought in and how much honey is made in a hive. So depending on the time of year, how many bees are working, and those conditions will determine how much honey is stored in the hive and how much honey can be produced at each time. We talked about honeycomb being capped. What exactly are the cappings on the honeycomb and what is the purpose of capping the honey? In this picture you can see cappings, but this is brood cappings. The bees will use wax to cover over the cocoons while the bees go from pupa to adult bees and they'll chew out um, of those cappings. So it's wax, but this is brood. And this picture is honeycomb cappings. I'm gonna bring this over here and cut the end caps off. So when honey is reaches a certain moisture level, it's dehydrated enough to be considered honey, it's about like 19% moisture, um, the bees will use the wax that they produce from between the plates of their abdomen. They produce wax, kind of a fatty, waxy substance that we know as beeswax. They'll take that wax and chew it up and utilize it to cover or seal over the honey, which will then remain, can remain for years and years in that, in that state as capped honey. So when we remove the end caps off this honeycomb, it allows us to be able to then get to the honey and be able to spin it out uh, using an extractor or crush comb the honey to strain it through a, a sieve to remove the cappings that are left and anything else that might be in the honey. And that is how uh, bees use that wax to seal things up. They use it to build their comb with and to cap it over and then when it's rendered down it makes this beautiful yellow wax that can be used for candles cosmetics and all kinds of things another question was how long does it take bees 
to fill the hive with honey. And once they are done, the question asks, do they leave? I already mentioned that it takes a honeybee its entire lifetime to produce just one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey. So a single bee works very hard to produce, to, to bring back enough nectar to produce that amount of honey. So you can imagine the thousands and thousands of bees that it takes to produce a jar of honey or a pound of honey. They fly in and out all day long. But what is really the key is what the nectar flow is. What is flowering at the time? Honey is brought in as food for bees and stored if there's an abundance of nectar. So in a flow like this, where you see that cabbage palm just flowering, it's not just a single bee, it's a flow of honey. And so there's hundreds of bees collecting the nectar as fast as they can and storing it to utilize as honey during a dearth, which means a lack of nectar. So as long as there's a flow going on, they're bringing in that honey. So a big hive can fill a box with honey within a week. Um, 12 frames or more, they can fill that box up with nectar and dry it up into honey. Within a week, they can do that. And then they keep that honey around till they'll need it for later. They don't leave, they stay and use it as honey. Next question is a common question. How much does it cost to keep bees? What's the minimum to keep bees? One of my favorite expressions is, you know you're a real beekeeper if your first jar of honey costs you $1,000. Well, sometimes that's exaggerating and sometimes it's not. You have to purchase all kinds of equipment, safety equipment, veils, smokers, frames, boxes, um, a stand. Uh, you need to be able to register your bees. So beekeeping can be expensive. You can do it on the cheap if you make your own equipment and um, get your bees maybe caught from a swarm. You can keep your cost under a couple hundred dollars. But if you're going to extract honey like this, use an extractor, that's a cost. Um, so upwards of thousands of dollars, depending on what you intend to do with your bees. If you want to render wax down, I purchased some cheap uh, crock pots at thrift stores to melt the wax. Um, but there are constant costs involved when beekeeping, jars to jar your honey with but you do get that lovely honey. Then you've got extracting tools such as this decapping um, roller. And if the family's into it, it makes it all worthwhile. Look how yummy these flowers are. A little nectar at the top. Hard to get in focus, but just yummy. Well, I hope I've answered some of your questions about honey and about honey bees. Um, leave a comment at the end of this video if you'd like to uh, like the video, if you would. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to. Hit the bell icon to be notified of future videos. And as always, thank you for joining us on The New Beekeeper Guy. This has been The New Beekeeper Guy.